appreciate the work that the governor is doing, and we're looking forward uh, to seeing even more policy changes and even more investments to make sure that the small businesses of the governor's hometown and all throughout the state of California survive this really challenging time. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our governor, Gavin Newsom. By the way, when did the avenues not become the avenues? What, what, you guys changed that? This is like the Richmond Avenue. It's the Richmond. All right, it's always been the Richmond. But, but I, it's I, the I, avenues. I'm just, no, I'm just, you know, I haven't been here in a little while. Uh, great to be here with you, Mayor, and thank you for all of the incredible work you're doing. Thank you for uh, the vaccination efforts. You've uh, been a leader in our vaccination efforts here in the state of California. California, as a consequence, has been a leader in this nation and around the rest of the world. There are just seven jurisdictions in the world, seven other countries in the world that have higher vaccination uh, administration rates. We in California just passed, uh, along with 11 other states, 70% of all adults receiving at least one dose of vaccines that now uh, at the place that President Biden hopes to get the rest of the country by July 4th. We recognize our responsibility to do more and better. Uh, a week ago, we announced incentives, cash prizes. Tomorrow, uh, we'll be pulling 15 names, $50,000 cash prizes uh, for individuals doing the same a week later. Uh, encouraging everybody to go out if they haven't been vaccinated to get vaccinated so they're eligible for those prizes, eligible for these incentives. Uh, we're mindful uh, that because of the success of our efforts that this last group of folks that may be on, the, you know, just a little hesitant, may not be convinced of the importance of the vaccine that we're going to have a lot of work to do. It's going to be stubborn. Uh, and so these incentives are about iterations, about trying new things, and we're going to continue to raise awareness. And I think tomorrow will go a long way to raising awareness around uh, this incentive program, since not everybody I talk to is even aware uh, that the state is doing incentives. And so that's a big part of our work uh, in front of us and the work that the country is doing. You saw the president today announcing his nationwide efforts and their expanding incentives, shots for shops shops and shops, you know, every, every conceivable thing from beer, incentives, localized incentives, restaurants, large and small, all part and parcel of our effort to get to where we all want to go, particularly here in California, and that's uh, to a world without a blueprint, uh, moving beyond that blueprint in just a couple weeks on June 15th. Uh, we're here, though, recognizing that as we move beyond the blueprint, as we reopen the economy fully, though the vast majority of the economy uh, is uh, operating in the least restrictive tiers in the state of California as we move to that final stage uh, on June 15th. We're mindful uh, of what we've been saying for many, many months. We don't want to go back to normal. Normal was never good enough. And I think one of those areas of opportunity is uh, what brings us here today. Uh, the mayor and I have had a lot of conversations about this. I mean, a dozen conversations about uh, the success of these parklets and how it's enlivened our streets, uh, how it not only saved restaurants and bars uh, through this pandemic, kept people employed through this pandemic, uh, but how it's revitalized neighborhoods in many respects uh, and about how it advanced the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, and we want to keep that going. And for years and years and years, I was mayor at the time many, many years ago. These were hard things to get permitted in this city, almost impossible. And if you did get it permitted with respect, director, you didn't always have uh, an ABC that, you know, picked up the phone, or dare I say, even gave a damn. I say that with love and respect. It was frustrating. And so we're trying to connect those dots, and we're trying to take something that really seemed to work in this pandemic and to allow the flexibility. We're not mandating anything but allowing the flexibility for cities large and small in the state, including San Francisco, to consider the opportunity to continue uh, to allow these parklets and these uh, opportunities to have outdoor dining, alfresco dining, to see them continue and to allow these businesses to expand their footprint and expand their opportunity to recover from this pandemic and moreover, uh, to create new business opportunities in the future. Uh, and so this is an opportunity for the entire state. Uh, we're seeing cities not it's similar to San Francisco and San Diego that are promoting uh, their outdoor dining in more progressive ways. San Jose uh, just announced their efforts recently. Long Beach 
has got some innovative strategies. Sacramento, I'm getting calls from mayors all over the state saying we want to see these things uh, be made uh, permanent. And I say be made because we're not naive about local zoning. We're not naive about local planning. I was a former mayor. A localism, I say often, is determinative. The mayor and the planning department, working with county supervisors, working with local zoning, will figure out the permanency of these things. But we want to get the state out of the way. We want to make this as of right from the state's perspective. And so we've got a number of pieces of legislation that is going through the California legislature. Some of that won't happen soon enough, so we want to make sure there are no gaps. And that's why we're going to extend these orders that we put into place going back to March of last year. There were seven specific regulatory relief efforts that the ABC advanced. Two of them we are going to extend through the rest of the calendar year. That will allow the legislature, working with ABC, working with Jock Conde, has been doing a magnificent job on behalf of restaurants for decades, but notably in the last year. And where would your daughter go? She just left. Right when I was about to introduce her. She's in the right. for food. All right, but uh, who's also a wonderful father. Um, uh, but want to provide that opportunity in that window uh, to be able to negotiate the finer points so we can see that we can extend this uh, beyond the calendar year. So this will allow folks to get continue to get the takeout. Uh, if you do take out food, you'll be able to get the takeout uh, uh, cocktails. Uh, this will allow the opportunity uh, to uh, provide more certainty in terms of the extended footprint uh, and the ability to allow operations, including uh, uh, the ABC uh, certifying the extended permits uh, for these outdoor dining spaces and parks, parklets, parking lots all throughout the state of California. So I, I'm very excited about this, um, and uh, and I think this is a, a good thing for our economic recovery. It's also a good thing for our public health, because we want to encourage more people still to be outside. This pandemic's not behind us. Uh, this pandemic is not extinguished. We still have an enormous amount of work to do. We're mindful of these variants. We're mindful of the fact that not all parts of the country are like the state of California or even San Francisco as it relates to vaccination rates and that as we enter into the hotter summer months, more people going inside looking for air conditioning, some of those issues uh, may bring um, these issues of COVID spread uh, back uh, in the forefront of our consciousness. So we want to encourage these outdoor seating opportunities, encourage uh, healthy choices uh, and obviously economic uh, opportunities. Final two points. This is part and parcel, and the mayor opened this door, and I appreciate that. Part and parcel of a series of efforts and initiatives the state has taken, including uh, doing direct relief grants of up to $25,000 for bars and restaurants. $25,000 grants, not loans. We extended that program. It's now, I believe, close to $4 billion. We did hundreds of millions of dollars in tax relief uh, and tax abatement, including not having to pay for the alcohol beverage control license. Uh, for at least two years, which in my recollection, the last I checked was over $1,200 and some for some licensees. So not insignificant sales tax relief, other payroll tax relief, hiring tax credits. We encourage folks to learn about all these tax credits, $1,000 hiring tax credits uh, through the Main Street Hiring Tax Credit Program. Go to COVID19.ca.gov, COVID19.ca.gov, learn about all these programs. It's still remarkable to me. Uh, how many people are eligible but still not taking advantage of these direct relief programs. Uh, in addition to that, I also want to remind people uh, that we have billions of dollars we've set aside to take care of your utilities and to take care of your rent. If you've been directly impacted by COVID-19, the state of California is proposing in our new budget to take care of 100% of your rent, your back rent, going back into the previous year and helping you moving forward, 100%. Again, it's remarkable to me how many people, A, don't believe it, or haven't availed themselves to that opportunity. Just 72,000 people in the state have uh, gotten applications in um, and approved on this program. So we've got to remind people of these opportunities. Incentives for vaccines, if you haven't taken them, direct $50 gift cards, opportunities to be in this cash slash lottery. It's not a lottery legally or technically, but it acts as if it's a lottery, which we'll be doing tomorrow on the 11th and on June 15th to make sure that businesses large and small are taking advantage of these grant programs, applying for them, tax credit programs, getting more information on that, and obviously the rental assistance, utilities, by the way, that also include water. 
hundred percent taken care of going back many, many months. So that's why I'm here to highlight these things, to thank the mayor for extraordinary leadership. Uh, this state's not coming back, it's coming roaring back. 38% of America's jobs came out of the state of California last month. 99 IPOs year to date. The state of California not only outperforming many other large states in terms of health outcomes, but the contraction of our economy was more modest than states like Texas, more modest than states like Florida, as we advanced our health uh, framework. We're very proud of this recovery, and we're poised to, uh, I think, experience uh, a recovery the likes of which none of us could have conceived of a couple of months ago, and it's because of you, Mom. Uh, because where's Elmi? It's not just brother here, Hulu, but Elmi and another, another member of the Tommy's family, uh, and all the entrepreneurs out here, and I just want to close by thanking them, uh, because I know how difficult and challenging this year has been. I want to thank all the small businesses. Jot reminds me of this all the time. At the end of the day, you can't be pro-job and anti-business. And it's the businesses that put everything on the line, that risk everything, that create these magical moments and create the serendipity that our restaurants and bars and and create a sense of place and neighborhood. And so for all those magical moments that you guys create every single day, those relationships, and I appreciated that point you made, that you develop um, in so many ways you make life worth living. And so I don't want to overstate it, but I'm not going to understate the importance of restaurants, the importance of these type of establishments to the quality of life in remarkable places like this in San Francisco. And so thank you, Tommy's, and hundreds of thousands of other businesses that we hope will take advantage of this new work. With that, we're here to answer any questions. Uh, Governor, a question about the state budget. The legislature has proposed a billion dollars in ongoing funding for homelessness flexible for local government. Do you have any concerns about that proposal? And then if I can ask a second question, you're here today to talk about small businesses. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're the first governor to have James Rolfe to go directly from running a business to politics. Do you feel any James kind Rolfe, of... James I appreciate it. I'm going to look that up. <laughs> Do you feel any kind of... Didn't he design City Hall as well? Uh, so I know a thing or two about Rolf. Yeah, that's about it. Only a thing or two. But do you feel any personal responsibility, burden to, you know, look out for business at small Yeah, I mean, I, it's my life. It was my passion. I, I got out of college with a dream to pen the paper. I got 13 investors, 7500 bucks. Uh, wasn't a, we didn't inherit it. It wasn't a family business, just an idea and was able to cobble it together. It took me 18 months because I had some ABC issues. <laughs> Literally, 18 months because I had ABC issues. I said, well, by the way, we got a great new director who's also a San Franciscan. Uh, so he uh, he knows a lot about your community, your city, Madam right Mayor. So no, I, I look, innovation, entrepreneurial spirit runs through our veins. It's what makes California so great, truly great. It's what the dream is built on. Uh, is all those risk takers, and so it's it's a big point of pride. It's personal for me. Uh, you know, I, I can't express to you how many extraordinary things have happened in my life because I had the privilege to be behind a counter serving other people. Uh, and so for me, it's as I say, it's more of an emotional attachment, not an intellectual. Number two, as it relates to the issue of homelessness, I'm very proud of the work we did the last few years to provide ongoing money to cities and counties under our HAP program. It used to be something called HEAP, we we'll hire that. Uh, we look forward to working with the legislature on this specific proposal. There'll be substantial money unquestionably coming under that program. The question is where we land. Uh, we have some differences, though I want to just express deep gratitude to the legislature uh, on what they announced a few days ago. Very consistent with where we hope to be, and I think we are well on our way to getting a balanced budget on time that we'll all be very, very proud of. And the homeless investments will be historic and unprecedented. The question is exactly what the final package looks like. That's part of a negotiation that's ongoing as we speak. Governor, do you see any of these changes becoming permanent? I mean, uh, a lot of these... I want the mayor is here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let, me just, let me just say, and, and, and the governor mentioned when he was mayor how difficult it was to get one of these. Well, when I was supervisor of District 5, I wanted to see these things all over our neighborhoods. Um, 
it is exciting to be mayor right now and to see these parklets. I mean, that, this is the one bright light we've had throughout this p pandemic because you see people, you see families, you see smiles, you see faces, and people are out enjoying San Francisco like never before. Yes, I love going inside and indoors when I'm cold, um, but in fact, you know, usually I don't like to be really cold. And I've been sitting out on the parklets with my coat on, and I don't want to go indoors anymore almost because the feeling of being outside and seeing people has been really amazing. And um, I don't know about you, but I do like to people watch. I don't know who likes to do that anymore, but um, my grandmother would sit in the window and I sit in the window and we'd people watch and talk about things. And so I, I just feel like it's bringing life to the city like never before. So yes, as far as I'm concerned, they're here to stay. I've made it clear as my legislation works its way through the Board of Supervisors that if they don't want to support it and they want to water it down, I will take my uh, uh, legislation to the voters because I think these are very popular additions. I'm, I'm, so, ex I'm so happy to hear this. <laughs> this is my kind of This talk. is fighting words. No, 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 but I'm, I'm honestly, this is great news. No, yeah, this is good news. It's great news, it's but good also, good you know, news. just making sure this is something that's really popular, it's supported and it supports our businesses. We keep talking about all the support for small businesses, but then we add bureaucracy and layers and money and re I mean, it, if you want to start a business back in the day, a long, long time ago when he was uh, starting his business out, many, many, many years ago, um, as a youngster in this city, it was not as difficult as it is now. Yes, ABC has always been difficult, but just in, ge <laughs> but just in general, you know, most people can start a business with a little bit of money and, and make a life for themselves. And now, you know, you have to pay $250,000 for an ABC license. You have to pay the city $250,000 to turn your water on. I mean, it's unbelievable how much money it costs to start a business. So I know I went off on a tangent, but I'm looking forward to breaking down bureaucracy, making it easier for small businesses, and, and, and getting continued support from the governor to help support our small businesses. It's been absolutely amazing to have someone who comes from small business uh, uh, management and oversight to be here and to understand the challenges that exist and to make the investments. I appreciate all that. All I can say is eat your heart out, Paris. San Francisco. Uh, and by the way, just FYI, just another thing I want to promote. We've waived the Franchise Tax Board fee for starting businesses in the state of California. It's another reminder uh, of some of the incentives uh, that we put into place. That need to be I might start a small business now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Governor, Kyle Osha um, sounded for Tiffany Hall today is considering rules that would require employees to wear a mask at workplaces unless everyone is vaccinated. Yeah. So this is stricter than the CDC guidelines that the state is following. Um, should there be a, a, a different standard for workplaces and please have the you consider no, look, I, look I, they're meeting today, OSHA, uh, and so we'll see where they land on the rulemaking before I make any determination of next steps. But look, the, the workplaces they're protecting, larger meatpacking facilities, larger industrial facilities, have different set of challenges and criteria, uh, and so OSHA, always mindful of that, and I'll be mindful of that in terms of making any subsequent decisions on whether uh, that needs to be adjusted or corrected. But they did delay the decision. They got a lot of feedback in the last few weeks. We'll see where they went today. And I'll have more to say after I uh, read the final determination. Governor, you mentioned that, um, that there are people who might not know about the vaccine incentive program. What is the state doing to reach out to, say, underserved communities? Well, we're doing it. It's been one week. We've been doing press conferences. We've been up and down the state working with ethnic media, community-based organizations. We've been doing door-knocking campaigns. We have something called GOTV. I was just part of it a couple of days ago. We get out the vaccination, literally boots on the ground, promoting this. I've personally been handing out cards uh, to individuals. I was down in Chinatown in L.A doing exactly that to promote this. So we've got to highlight this. And again, just started uh, a week ago. We had the Memorial Day weekend, so we knew there'd be a significant decline over Memorial Day weekend. Um, and that, that was the case. Numbers a little better, 172,000 yesterday uh, than the prior day. But we're seeing what that looks like in the wash of the weekend. The president highlighting things is helpful. I think more important will be tomorrow uh, as we highlight the cash grants when people actually receive 
$150,000 and 15 people will only if you've been vaccinated. And by the way, it's all people that have been previously vaccinated are eligible as well. Uh, but those that haven't yet get vaccinated, they can be in that raffle. They can also get in next week's raffle and have the opportunity to uh, get a million and a half dollars on June 15th. And so I think this will build up. Uh, but again, for us, it's about just finishing the job and the hardest part, you know, 10% between 30 and 40%, that's easy. Between 70 and, and 75, 80% of adults, that's going to be hard. And that's the space we're in, particularly with adults. And, uh, and we're going to have a lot of work to do in the next few weeks to get where we want to be. So, Governor, in, in plain old simple television news soundbite ease, what are you doing here today symbolically? What are you saying? Not symbolically, substantively extending the opportunity for restaurants to operate as they have by allowing takeout not just of food, but takeout of cocktails to extend that uh, and to allow that at least through Jan January 1st next year. Uh, we're also looking to allow the flexibility for mayors all across the state to allow these parklets to become permanent in cities large and small, providing the flexibility in terms of the state rules and regulations mindful of local rules and regulations. So you're saying not every city is like San Francisco in terms of these? Not every city. No, there's no city like San Francisco, period, full stop. As, it's, uh, as, it's, as it goes, the issue of parklets, this has taken off everywhere. I haven't been to any city, and I've been every part of the state. Uh, every part of the state has been moving in this direction enthusiastically. Central Valley, not just the coasts. Uh, and just noted Long Beach, San Diego, LA, you're seeing these all over. And it's really revitalizing communities and neighborhoods. And as the mayor said, it, it's just about re-engaging people after a year where we've been behind our uh, doors and been you know, behind our masks and just reconnecting. So it has a profound impact, not just economically and health, but also in terms of spirit and pride. Should, we, should getting these things legal across the state, should it be so bureaucratic? You make it sound like it's almost difficult, like you had to do it persuading. Well, that's what we're not persuading. We're trying to make it less bureaucratic. The announcement here today, by definition, is removing roadblocks and bureaucracy from the state's perspective. I can't account to local decisions, local planning, local ordinances. I'm mindful as a former mayor uh, to respect that. But as well as the state's role, we're getting out of the way. Got time for about two Young Governor, what, what have businesses been telling you? Because as we talk about the Palo Alto show and the workplace rules that are perhaps going to be finalized today, have business owners expressed any concern to you whether they're going to be able to track the vaccination of their employees, whether their employees and their restaurant employees will have to wear masks on June 15th? What, what kind of discussions have you had? Uh, it, it, almost daily discussions. And, and you know, Jot, and then you've got someone representing one of those vibrant industries. Uh, in the largest state, the world's largest democracy, and he's been at this for decades. John, maybe you can answer that more specifically. Yeah, I mean, certainly, uh, Cal OSHA, their their action today will will play a huge role in how restaurants, um, you know, move forward. Um, but certainly, um, our expectation is that um, you know our employees need to feel comfortable and safe um, in in the environment, their work environment. Um, and certainly we're seeing as consumers come back out to dine indoors and, and outdoors, um, we're still seeing that there is um, a reluctance on, on, on behalf of many customers, uh, some who have not been vaccinated yet, and we're hoping that to see everybody get vaccinated. Um, but um, the, mat, the face masks at, at this point, um, in many respects, uh, go towards a lot of consumer confidence that they're uh, in, in restaurants. Um, so, um, it's important for us, our, our top priority as an industry are, are, is the safety and well-being of our employees. Um, and until we get to a critical mass, um, our expectation is that the face mask uh, requirement will last perhaps longer than June 15th. And, won't for, and I'll just remind everybody, on June 15th, the blueprint is removed. Businesses will not have the restrictions under these color tiering. Uh, all outdoor activities will have no mass requirements. Large scale indoor activities, north of 5,000, the massive uh, scale will have some requirements around masks uh, and or vaccines uh, and or testing. As it relates to the OSHA requirements, we'll see where that lands and that will be a nuance in between. Hey, last question here. Governor, with uh, schools 
coming back, reopening, big a push to reopen. How are you anticipating handling potential outbreaks amongst students, especially under 12? I think we've been. We have been open and we haven't had any major outbreaks. Yeah. My goodness. So, uh, Mayor and I share that same sentiment. It's, you know, we need our kids back in person, full time, instruction period, full stop on, on June 30th. Uh, that is the law in the state of California, midnight June 30th, period, full stop. It just, uh, you know, with respect, I appreciate the stress and I appreciate the anxiety, uh, but we haven't seen major outbreaks. We've had the uh, vast majority of schools uh, have the option to be in person. Uh, many were operating in the midst of the last surge in, in December and January without significant outbreaks, and so I have all the confidence in the world, our capacity to, to deliver on that and uh, keep our kids safe, keep our paraprofessionals safe, not just our teachers. Governor, right, on, the, you, on, the, on the wing for the vax, um, how are you going to do that tomorrow? Uh, are you going to do that tomorrow? Um, and uh, just answering critics like uh, Republicans out there who are saying that this is legalized bri you know, bribery and such. Well, I mean, I, I imagine they're critical of other Republicans as well on that basis. Uh, so, uh, you know, this has been, I, I, in fact, we had an opportunity the other day to have uh, a governor's call with the White House and hearing governors bipartisan across the spectrum sharing best practices on giveaways and incentives, uh, handing out guns, hunting licenses, uh, you know, uh, I, I mean, across the spectrum. I mean, everybody's doing this in some way, shape, or form. Most states are doing this in some way, shape, or form. So I don't think what we're offering is novel. It's just at a scale that's larger than any other state, by definition. The size and scale of our state is such that we should be doing more. Um, and, and again, it's all about iteration. It's about best practices, learning from each other. Some things will work, some things will fall short of expectations. Uh, but uh, these are federal dollars primarily, and uh, these dollars actually were made available with language that came from the Biden administration to encourage states like ours to move in this direction. And so we want to take advantage of that and see how far this takes us. Tomorrow will be interesting, see how it goes. We are, by the way, sensitive. I got a couple friends of mine on my text or email and said, what about my privacy? I don't want to be in the lottery. I mm -hmm. said, well, you don't have to. Um, you could say no, but your privacy is protected. And I just want to remind folks that we're not yeah, making no. public the names. <laughs> she, of course, says, yeah, the mayor's like, oh, well, I'll take their place. <laughs> but but we, want to, we want folks to know this. We're not going to announce anybody's names without their permission is the law that I'm making, because some people are a little nervous about being made public uh, tomorrow. They won't be. But we encourage, like again, if you don't get vaccinated, you can't participate. So anyone's been on the fence, this is the moment to do it. Get it done today. Uh, tomorrow you get in next week, on June 15th, $15 uh, million will be handed out. $15 million. And you never know, Mayor Breed, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank, thank you, everybody.